Hello everybody, uh, I'm going to be talking about flat fielding for your solar images in this tutorial. And just like in regular <clears throat> astrophotography, uh, creating flats is a really uh, good way to improve your image quality. Uh, for solar imaging, it's a little different. And the way we're going to create the flat is much different. Um, what happens is, is when we start using stuff like PowerMates and Barlow, let's say a 2x or a 5x, you know, Barlow, or PowerMate, regardless of its size, we're, we're, you know, what we're doing is, is these are focal extenders, so we're technically increasing our native focal length by this factor. What happens is when we increase our focal length from prime focus, Especially, this is especially true with CCD cameras, just to note that. Especially true with CCDs because they're so sensitive. <clears throat> what happens is, is when we, once we start magnifying the image a little more, uh, imperfections actually on the camera chip or the, the sensor cover um, will be magnified as well. And we'll be able to see more stuff like Newton rings, which is the most dreaded for solar imaging. Those are really hard to get rid of. Uh, dust bunnies or, par or particles, you know, dust specks on the actual camera chip. And a lot of this stuff you would never have seen at prime focus. I'm not sure why I'm writing this, but sure. At prime focus, you might not see it that much, but once we start extending using focal extenders, uh, this stuff becomes a problem. So how do we correct that? This is what we're going to do. When I go outside, I'll demonstrate this on the computer while I'm recording the sun. This is the sun, and normally my camera and the focal length I'm using on my telescope, at prime focus I can actually fit the entire disk into the field of view. So all the photons from the sun are gathered on the chip here. Um, when I start to introduce the power meter bar though, you know, we're looking at something like this. Okay. And what's going to happen is, is once I start increasing my focal length using these devices, I'm going to start getting all the Newton rings and the junk. What we want to do is, while we're outside recording, when we're finished recording, whether we're just doing one image like this, or we're doing a bunch of separate ones like this, maybe to create a mosaic, you know, once we've finished imaging, without changing the camera settings, now this is very important, just like in regular astrophotography, when you're creating a flat or a dark, uh, specifically a dark, you don't want to change your settings. You know, you just put a lens cap on and you take the same photo with the same camera settings. With this technique, we don't want to change any of the camera settings and also do not change the orientation of the camera because uh, that'll, that'll mess things up. So keep everything the same, keep everything constant. When you're finished doing your recording session, make, take the camera and move, or the mount and move it over to where your next file is in the center of the sun and that the entire camera chip is being filled up with photons from edge to edge of solar detail. Okay? This is key. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take, we're going to start recording, well I'm sorry, before we start recording, we're going to purposely unfocus the telescope. So this image will become really blurry. It's be a big blob. But what happens is, is when we unfocus the Newton rings, particles, the dust bunnies, all the imperfections will start to really come out. And what we're going to do is, we want to take around 500 frames. You know, for my regular imaging, I'll do, I do like a thousand frames for my regular images. For the flat field, do about 500. And then we're going to take that 500 frame AVI file and go into a program like AutoStacker and turn it into a master flat and apply the master flat to each individual AVI file, whether it's batch processing a couple or just one, we're going to take that master flat and apply it to all your images, and we should see a, a diminish in dust specs. They, actually, all the dust specs should be gone. Newton rings are a different story. You still might have those, but it will improve the image quality. So without further ado, let me uh, go outside and I'll get on the computer and I'll demonstrate really quickly the, uh, the flat filling technique by unfocusing the telescope.
<coughs> Alrighty, now that we have um, done the recording session, and like you just saw, I I just took one image, I just did one recording, and then I did the flat. And if you notice in the flat, when you go out of focus, it really exasperates the Newton rings and the dust bunnies. So now how do we apply that flat? Let's demonstrate with Auto Stacker. So open up Auto Stacker. And what we want to do is we open up, we want to open the flat file first, and I named it as a flat. Okay. Yeah, see, so look familiar. Now look at all these dust bunnies, see the specs, the Newton rings. Uh, yeah, so that's really bad stuff. We don't want our images. I mean, we've worked pretty hard to record. <clears throat> we don't want this stuff in our final image. Well, all we need to do now is, once you've opened it up, we don't need to analyze it. Just go to Image Calibration and create Master Frame Ignore Master Dark. Now, if you're using a different version of Auto Stagger, it'll say Create Master Flat. But for this version, which is 2.2, I'm going to do Create Master Frame with Ignore Master Dark. So let's click on that. And then it's going to convert it into a still image, a TIFF file, and I'm going to name this TIFF file flat. And then it won't take long, as you can see the uh, progress bar here. Okay, so our master flat has been made. Very, very simple. Now, let's open up the file or the files that we will actually want to stack in a line. Like I said, I only did one, called a tutorial. This, yeah, here we go. Let me show you over here. Now, you can do, you can batch process using the same master flat as long as, you know, you're batch processing files that had the same camera settings. But before I begin, see that very noticeable dust bunny? There's a, no, that's an actual sunspot. Let's see, there's one right here. Uh, there's another one in the corner. They're all over the place. And this stuff in our final image is going to look like crap, so let's get rid of it. Now, here's the magic. Are you ready? Keep an eye on this dust bunny and this dust bunny. Well, first here, watch this. Go to image calibration. Now, we want to load the master flat that we just created. Okay. Now, find your flat. This is my flat TIFF image. It's a single TIFF image. Now, here, as soon as I load this, watch this dust bunny here and this one up here. As soon as I open this up, they're going to disappear. Boom. Completely gone. Uh, that's really amazing. I mean, that's so, so helpful. That is just awesome. And um, AutoStacker used to have, if you have an older version of AutoStacker, uh, there's a problem where the image will brighten up a lot when you apply the flat. But uh, Emil has uh, fixed it. That's his name, uh, Emil. I think that's how you pronounce it, the guy who wrote the software. But yeah, that's awesome. Check that out. Now, if you want to remove the flat, all you got to do is go back up to image calibration and click disable. Now, watch what happens when I disable the flat. And there it goes. It pops right back up. It's just like erasing all the bad stuff. It's really cool. So I'm going to load it back up. And there we go. And then, of course, you can just go along and do your regular, you know, stacking uh, parameters that you normally do. But that's it. That's basically it. So that's how you do flat filling with the solar images. It's a pretty simple process. There are some other techniques, but I would suggest try this out first and uh, use AutoStacker. AutoStacker is a great uh, program for solar surface imaging. So, yes, good luck, and I hope that helped. If you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Take it easy.